Hello and welcome to another 2017 Prayer to Pray Programming Exam Solution Tutorial. This is for the Upper Sixth, the A-Level, Paper 1 AQA Computer Science Paper. Uh, we're looking at a variety of different uh, problems that could come up in the exam. And for this particular one we're going to look at the idea that a fox might move. Uh, if, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the exam pre-release so I'm not going to go over that at all and I'm assuming that you're also pretty familiar with the programming code. Now this was a really nice uh, idea that I actually first saw in the computing wiki book. If you've not looked at the computing wiki book I strongly recommend you do. It's got loads of good ideas and the idea is that foxes in the real world move about, they even move their dens so why not in the simulation? And we could have it that they move all the time and they've not had enough food after a certain number of years and we could have it that they just move randomly they move towards the biggest warren or maybe to try and maximise the access to food. And the two options I've decided to go to today are when it's not had enough food and towards the biggest warren mainly because these, you know, are a reasonable task, but uh, they're achievable in the sort of time frames that we could put in for one of the last two questions in paper one. So, you know, they, they could be worth 15 marks, something like that, maybe. Now, I ought to point out, of course, that the simulation does allow for the idea that foxes move, because, of course, they eat rabbits within a certain radius their location. So what we're actually talking about is is changing the sort of uh, their initial position at the start of each time period. Right then, quite a lot to to think about. If we're going to have it so the fox moves towards the biggest warren, we need to know where the biggest warren is. So we need to get this location. Um, we need to uh, use the sort of standard find biggest value algorithm um, and just loop through the entire array and just somehow store uh, where that biggest warren is for a particular time period and of course it will change every time period. We also need to work out when the fox will move and we've just said it's when it's hungry so that's either true or false and we'll need to get and set it. And then crucially at the end we're going to need to somehow move the fox from its current position to another position. And that's, that's fairly easy to do, but it's got to be thought about carefully about how to make sure it moves in a particular, uh, in a particular direction. So, if you are not uh, keeping up with all these things, I suggest you go back to the code, uh, make sure you understand what the problem is, run through the, the simulation and think, Oh yeah, okay. I can see that if a fox stays in a lo certain location, it's possible that it won't have enough food to eat. However, if it was to move towards the biggest warren, it is more likely that it will have uh, enough food to eat. So, let's get on with it. Let's find the biggest warren. This is the code uh, I came up with. It's um, just a simple set of nested uh, for loops that will go through every single element in the uh, in the landscape. We're using this slightly strange um, logic that is used elsewhere in the code to say is there a, is there a warrant in that location which works very well so we might as well reuse it and we're only going to bother executing the next bit of code if there's a warrant there, because it's completely stupid trying to assess it. In fact, it will crash. There will be an exception if we don't do this. Right, there's already a method in the warrant called get rabbit count. So all we're going to do is say, is that number of rab rabbits in the, that warren, the get rabbit count, is that greater than our current set of max rabbits, which we've initialized at the start to be zero? If it is, assign it. I really hope that you've already 
done a sort of fine maximum value in an array type uh, problem at some point in the past. So you're familiar with this uh, setup. The only thing we are doing is rather than just getting the index, obviously we're doing the it's a 2D array, so we've got to find we've got to store both indexes. And one of the things you may have noticed is that we spend a load of time telling you when we're doing structure programming that global variables are bad. But as soon as we're to object oriented, we can call them private properties uh, and they're they're perfectly acceptable. So we've got this being assigned to private properties and that's going to make our life massively easy when it comes to move the fox. I've stuck in a little sort of line here purely for testing but also um, yeah it's, 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 a, it's nice basically it means that whenever this is run which is once a time period I will get an output so that I can check that this has actually produced the right value Okay, my um, PowerPoint's done a good job there. Hopefully I've got my animations right on this slide. Again, get this coded, have a test, make sure you solve this. You can just call this from um, somewhere near the end of, a, of the advanced time period in the simulation. We'll, we'll look at when to call this later. Now need to identify when a fox should move, and one of the nice things about OOP is that we can sort of set it up so it looks really nice in the end, but it does mean that our code is split about a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a property in Fox called um, uh, move fox, and we're going to have a getter function. So we've got a boolean called move fox, and we've got this getter uh, function or accessor function or muter, whatever you want to call it, which is simply going to return the value. Private property, public function, or public method, job done. And again, hopefully you can see where this is in the code. We're not going to have a setter that is just, you know, move fox equals true or move fox equals false. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to actually set it from inside advanced generation and we're going to say that if the food units consumed this period is less than the food units needed as well as advancing the age and as well as showing that uh, the fox has aged due to lack of food we're just going to set move fox to true so if there's not enough food we're going to set this property to true and then we'll use that property later on So again, make sure you understand what's going on. We've got three things happening there. Create a property, have a getter, and the setter is actually from an existing piece of code. And it's where our criteria that we said earlier. Now we get to the nuts and bolts, actually moving the fox. There's loads of ways we can do this, but let's keep it really simple that the fox moves a little bit like a king in chess and it's going to move just one location at a time but it is allowed to move diagonally and what we'll do is that if there's a difference in the uh, x dimension that it will move one towards in that but also in the y direction so if there's a difference in x and a difference in y it will move diagonally if it's just in the Y, it'll just move vertically. If it's just in the X, it'll just move horizontally. And it'll move in the correct, um, and it will move in the correct direction. We're going to call this from advanced time period. But let's let's come back to that. We're going to create our own uh, method or sub procedure, whatever you want to call it. And let's have a little look at that now. Call it Fox Moves and we're going to give it two values x and y and that's going to be the values x and y of the current fox we are in simulation but we're going to iterate through every fox in the um, every fox in the landscape which is what 
uh, advanced time period does and at that stage we will pass this these two coordinates to this sub procedure only if the fox needs to move but let's actually have a look at how this fox is going to move so um where do we start we're going to have a couple of variables a couple of local variables that are effectively going to say in which direction is it going to move so plus one minus one or zero and we'll initialize them to zero so if the biggest warren location x is less than the fox location x then it makes sense that we need to move one backwards i.e. x move is minus one obviously if x is greater than sorry if warren x is greater than x then we'll need to move positive one if neither of these are true we're not going to do anything because we've already initialized this to zero so basically if it's in line with x sorry if the biggest warren is in line with the fox is x location then we'll just leave that to zero uh, we'll do the same with y so we've now got both the x and y coordinates handled completely separately and we now need to not have the difference, the move, but actually return uh, these uh, values. Do you know, I've just realised I've been really lazy and not uh, put uh, by ref or by val on those uh, parameters, but I'll, I'll do that in a moment. And we now need to make the move. Look carefully at this. So, landscape xy dot fox is the instance of a fox at that location. If you don't understand that, you need to look back at the landscape. Um, where are we? So the location, sorry, the location class. Okay, and you need to look at how landscape is created and the idea that it's an array, a two-dimensional array of location. So each element of that is an instance of location and this is composed of foxes or warrens. Which by default is set to nothing, but don't have to be. I'm not sure whether this question will come up in the exam, obviously, but I feel almost certain that something to do with this array of objects. Something to do with that is going to come up. I think if you don't understand that, you're throwing marks away. Right. So this is an instance of Fox. And what we're doing is we're going to assign this instance of Fox to another instance of Fox, but at a different location. And it's just x plus 1 or minus 1, and this is plus or minus 1, and it's just quite neat. I mean, you could have solved this with some horrific, long, um, else if, else if, else if, else if statement, but this is a slightly neater way of doing it. So I'm hoping that that makes sense to you, that I've moved, sorry I haven't, I've copied that fox to this location. And now the last little thing we need to do is make sure that uh, we have this being assigned nothing. And I'm using that as a destructor. There are other destructors in um, VB.net and I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. I'm not a massive fan of the dispose and finalize uh, in .NET uh, in VB. This is simpler and certainly it's more in line with the code uh, elsewhere. So, I'm hoping that makes sense to you. A couple of if statements to see whether we have to move left or right, up and down, and then apply that by making a copy of the fox and destroying the old fox. So, we ought to have a quick look about where we call this. 
Hopefully you're happy that that's what we've just achieved. Advanced time period is pretty much where everything happens. So let's go back to our code. And let's have a look down. If you are not 100% sure about the order that everything happens in here, uh, an advanced time period, and exactly what goes on and how it goes on, spend some time stepping through the code. Again, not being really confident about what all of this does uh, will really hamper your uh, what you can achieve in the in the exam. Right then, so. Forget, let's forget the Warren stuff for a moment. Let's go back to um, this second section, which is talking about foxes. So ultimately, we're going to advance time period already loops through the through the uh, landscape for us, and crucially, that advanced generation is going to be called here. At this stage, for this fox, the value of move box will be set for us. Don't need to worry about that, we've already set that up. So all the foxes in the all of the foxes in the landscape will already have the Boolean value set for whether they should move or not. And that will the code for whether they've had enough food to eat has already been executed. So if we put our last bit of code about moving fox before any of this, these will crash. These are all expecting foxes in the location they currently are. So, what we're going to do is, after all the other fox stuff has happened, we're going to simply say that if our current fox dot fox needs to move, oh yeah, that's a boolean, that's the that's the getter. If that's tr uh, true, then we call fox moves. Simply pass it. Uh, the current location and it will sort everything else out. One of the little things that we haven't yet done is that right at the end of all of this we just need to make sure we update the value of find biggest warren. So right at the end of um, advanced time period when all the warrens have been um, multiplied and the fox have eaten and stuff we can uh, find the biggest warren. There is a bit of an argument to say, well, shouldn't we have um, done find the biggest warren at the end of this bit? We we, we could have done, but I, my personal preference is just do it at the end of the time period, so we're dealing with a fixed value. It's not 100% true to simulation. In the exam, they would always tell you where to stick that. So, a little bit of a marathon. We have just worked out how to get a biggest warrant, how to identify whether a fox should move based on if it's not good enough food, and we've also worked how to execute the fox move within the simulation. Oops. If you want to completely recreate this, completely rip it off, but in another language, I am more than happy for you to do it. Uh, if you think you've got a better solution or an alternative solution, please uh, whack in a comment and link it to your own video. Um, I think the more we can play around with this, the the better prepared everyone's going to be. It doesn't matter if this comes up exactly as it's uh, been presented here. All we care about is that you're playing around with the code, getting used to it, getting your eye in, um, thinking about how the different methodologies that you've been taught over the year can be applied to, to the exam. I really, really, really hope you found that useful. Let me know if you have. Let me know if you think I've made a mistake. Uh, let me know if you have not struggled. I will give a link to my paste bin where the final solution for this code is somewhere in a comment. I won't do that straight away because I want to try to force you all to play with it a bit. But uh, in, a, in a bit of time, I will actually give out the solutions to this. Hope you found that useful.